What's up guys, my name is Justin Graziano and I'm going to show you how to edit epic product photography like this. Thanks so much for stopping by to check out my video. If you guys haven't checked out the behind the scenes of how I captured all these images, I'll go ahead and link that video down below. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the breakdown of how I edit photos like these in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you the tools I use to achieve photos like these. If you guys have any questions along the way, please make sure you drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. So let's get into it. All my edits start in Lightroom. This is where I like to add in all my basic color corrections and select all my favorites. From there, I'm gonna select all the images I want to composite by holding down the Alt or Option key. For this photo, I'm gonna show you how I composite the splash into the photo as well as all the falling pecans. But here, we're gonna start with just the splash. To open your selected photos in Photoshop, all you need to do is right click on your photo, scroll down to edit in, and then go to open as layers in Photoshop. This will open all your photos directly into Photoshop and into one document, basically eliminating the process of you having to export all your photos and reopen them in Photoshop. Once all your photos have opened up in Photoshop and get to editing, the first thing I want to do is cut the background as well as the glass to allow us to add in the glass with the splash. You can do this in a number of ways, but we're going to do it using the pen tool. All you need to do is click to drop an anchor point, and that will create a path that you can turn into a layer mask. Once you have your image fully traced using the pen tool, you're going to right click, scroll down to make selection, and apply your layer mask. This will automatically apply a mask according to the path you just traced. Next, we're going to replace the background we just removed by adding in a new layer and filling it with black to create a nice smooth background. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to add in our glass with the splash. Start by disabling the mask you just created and place your splash photo on top and then change your blend mode to difference. This will help us align our splash image to where the original glass is placed. Once everything is aligned, go ahead and flip that layer back to normal. Then we're gonna go in using the pen tool to trace the glass plus any of the splash that's coming straight out. Don't worry about any of the spray as we're gonna be adding that in a different way. Once you finish tracing your splash, go ahead and apply a layer mask just like you did before. And then if we wanna go in and fine tune things, we can add a small feather to our mask that really helps blend things together. Let's go ahead and add a one pixel feather to this mask. This basically helps soften up the edges and really blends our image together. Next thing you want to do is add some of the spray back in from our splash. Start by duplicating your splash layer and placing it underneath your original splash layer. You can do this by clicking on the layer that you want to duplicate and holding down the Alt or Option key and dragging it inside the Layers panel to duplicate. From here, we're just going to add in a Levels Adjustment layer and clip it to the Spray layer using the Alt or Option key. This Levels layer is going to help us clean things up in our backdrop by sliding around the blacks and the mids until we have a nice clean spray image. And to clean things up even more, we can add a layer mask on and brush out any things like my softbox on the left side or any unwanted wrinkles. So now that we've added in our splash, the next thing we're going to do is add in all the falling elements, which in this case is the pecans. We're going to jump back into Lightroom and check out what images we captured for this. Let's go ahead and pick a few for this photo and we're going to open them up in Photoshop by right clicking, going to edit in and selecting edit in Adobe Photoshop. Once your new file is opened up in Photoshop, you can either cut them out using the pen tool or use the quick and dirty way, which is the magic wand tool. In this case, we have a solid background, so we can use the magic wand tool and only have to do a few minor adjustments. You can start this by selecting your background using the magic wand tool and then applying a layer mask. Once your mask has been applied, go ahead and hit the backslash key. That's going to help you see the places where your mask has already been applied. Then using the brush tool, you can go in and clean up a few things. From here, we're just gonna invert our mask to see how things are looking. But as you can see, we still need to tweak a few things. Once you have your mask where you like it, go ahead and add a solid feather to help clean things up a bit. And after you've done that, just apply your mask and use the last tool to select the objects that you wanna copy and paste to your original document. Here you can adjust the size and placement of your falling objects. I like to use the pecans in the base image as reference for how large I should make them. Let's go ahead and add a few more. This time you can grab one we shot using my preferred method, which is shooting on a wire. You repeat all the same steps, just making sure to remove the wire this time. Once you've started placing following elements into your photo, you're going to want to add in a little bit of depth to your photo, which you can do by blowing up some of your elements nice and large and adding a nice blur to them, and then placing them in the foreground of your photo to make them feel like they're flying towards the camera. We'll go ahead and repeat these steps filling out our frame using about five to six of the same elements, but resizing them or flipping them around to help us diversify our shot but just be mindful that you aren't drawing too much attention away from the main subject, which in this case is the beer. 
The whole point of this is to add movement and depth to your photo as well as help guide your viewer's eye to the subject. Once you've got a good feel for your photo, take a step back and look at it and see if there's anything that needs fixing. Like right here in the glass, you can see there's kind of a weird line from where the foam was. It kind of makes me feel like the glass is dirty, so let's go ahead and remove that using the patch tool. All you need to do is draw a lasso around what you want to remove and then drag it to what you want to replace it with. This tool doesn't work every time, so you may need to switch between the lasso tool and the stamp tool to achieve the cleanest look as possible. Now that we've got that line removed, let's go ahead and remove any specks of dust or anything weird we may be seeing in our photo using the same method just to help clean things up. Once you've finished cleaning up your photos, here comes the easiest part, which is the crop. For this photo, since it's going to be used primarily on social media, I like to provide my clients with a 1x1 or a 4x5 crop for social media posts, as well as a 9x16 for stories, and then a full frame crop so they can use it on their website or for press releases for anything else they may want to use it for. And as I'm cropping, I like to add slight tweaks like tilting my photos to help add a little bit of style, as well as help out with the eye drawing effect that we're after. Once you finish your crops and exporting your photos and they're ready to go, send them to your clients and see how stoked they are. And if they're just for yourself, go ahead and post them on social media and hopefully you get flooded with a ton of positive feedback on all your hard work. And there's nothing better than getting positive feedback on something you've worked so hard on. And that being said, I hope you guys found this editing breakdown helpful. I know some of you might not know these tools as well as I do, so please let me know in the comments below and I'd be glad to help you out. These videos are definitely a work in progress, so I hope you guys decide to stick around and check out more of my videos. If you do, please make sure you like this video, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and until then, thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next one.